Hello guys, welcome to Bhavna's Online Academy. So now we are going to see the sums of AS25. We had already discussed the concepts in the last video. So please make sure to watch that and then come to this video where we will be discussing all the illustrations and test your knowledge questions. Yes, so starting with the illustration number one. They tell you that there is a sincere corporation, there is a company and it is dealing in a seasonal product and the sales pattern as are follows. So in first quarter they have 10% sales, in second quarter they have 10%, third quarter 60%. And fourth quarter, they have 20% of sales. So, information regarding the first quarter is given to you, which is period ending 30th June 2021. So, this quarter's data is given to you. And they are telling that in that period, the sales is 80 crore rupees, salary and other expenses 60 crores, advertisement expenses 4 crores, and administrative and selling expenses is 8 crores. So, here they are saying that when preparing the interim financials report for the first quarter, the company wants to defer 10 crores expenditure to the third quarter. So, amongst these three expenses, up to 10 crores of expense, they want to defer to what? To the third quarter and they don't want to book it in this quarter. And having an argument that they have more sales in the third quarter. So, for that, they want to put the expenditure in the third quarter. Considering the seasonal nature of business and expenditure are uniform throughout all quarters, calculate the result of first quarter. Okay, so now we have to calculate the result of a particular quarter. So, for that, what format did I tell you? First, write what is the turnover, other income, then write the change in salaries, salaries and other costs and administrative and selling expense. So, now how result of first quarter ended, what was the period you write that? Okay, so here first, now let's discuss about this point and then go back to the answer. So, here they are saying that they want to defer a particular expense. They have incurred this 10, 10 crore of expenditure in the quarter 1 itself, but they want to defer this to quarter 3. Is this acceptable the answer is no you should not defer any of your expenditure which you have incurred in a particular quarter i have taught you that in the concept video also so here they should not defer it so what is going to be the result result means what is basically going to be their profit or loss so turnover is 80 crore rupees right that there is no other income so your total uh, revenue will be 80 crores then change in inventories will usually be nil only so sal so then you have salary and other expenses of 60 crores so, write this 60 crores here and ad advertisement expense and admin expense are 4 crores and 8 crores. So, I told you advertisement expense also you have to show under admin and selling expenses only. So, totally 12 crores will come here. So, 72 crores of expenses are there. So, your profit is going to be 80 minus 72 which is going to be 8 crores. Okay. I hope you understood this. Basically, the question here was that this 10 crores of expense you should not defer it to another quarter. In this quarter itself, you should book it. Okay. Next is illustration number two where they tell you that there is a company X limited and the quarter ending 30th September. Okay, here for the purpose of tax, the year ends at 31st March every year and then they have given you the quarterly income. So, quarter 1, 2, 3, 4, 200, 200, 200, 200 crores. So, totally 800 crores of income is there. This is nothing but your annual income. Okay. And then they are telling you that average actual tax rate for the financial year is 20% and financial year ending is 30%. Okay. So, they are saying that there are two financial year ending. One financial year ending 31st March 2021 and 31st March 2022. So, 31st March 2021, the tax rate is 20% and 31st March 2022 is 30%. Okay. Here, you have to see that. So, here what are the four quarters? 31st December, 20th, so it would be basically um, December, right? So, October, November, December of 2020, then this will be Jan, Feb, March of 2021, April, May, June of 21, July, August, September of 21. And then here they are saying that for financial year ending 31st March 2021, so, until this, so until 31st March 2021, until this period, the tax rate was how much? It was 20%. After that, it became how much? It became 30%. So, now on this 400 crores, you have to calculate it 200%. On this 400 crores, you have to calculate it 30%. Okay. So, let's first find out that. So, 200 crores into 200 crores into 20%. Then the rest to 200 crores, 200 crores at 30%. So, this will be your tax expense for each quarter. So, your total tax expense is 40, 40, 60, 60. Okay. So, I told you, right, this was, uh, the point was that if there are two uh, different tax rates, tax rate for two different financial year 
and some interim period is falling in one year and some interim period is falling in another year then in such case whatever the applicable tax rate is you have to directly take that and you should not find out the weighted average tax rate i told you this in the concept video also i hope you remember this point okay next is illustration number three so illustration number three, they tell you that there is Poonima Limited and they have a net profit of 7,20,000 for the third quarter. And they have done the following things. Okay. So first is there are bad debts of 40,000 which has incurred during the quarter. So the totally they should have booked the expense of 40,000. But what they have done is 50% of the bad debts have been deferred to the next quarter. Can you defer any expense to the ne next quarter? The answer is no, you cannot defer. So this 50% of bad debts which you have deferred to the next quarter, you have to book it in this quarter itself. That means in the third quarter itself you have to book. So this change you have to make. Next thing they have told that extraordinary loss of 35,000 has been incurred during the quarter has been fully recognized. That is a correct treatment. So the complete loss, whatever has been there, they have completely recognized in that quarter itself in which it was occurred. So this is a correct treatment. So no changes to be made here. Next is additional depreciation of 45,000. Um, resulting from the change in the method of charge of depreciation, assuming that it is a charge of third quarter. So third quarter additional depreciation has been charged in the third quarter only. So this is a correct treatment. So that tier, uh, that particular quarter expense have been charged in that quarter itself so it's a correct um, procedure so here no changes have to be made so only related to first point change you have to make so in the above case um, yes so bad debts are totally 40,000 50,000 that means 20 percent of it has been charged to next quarter but you should charge it in this quarter itself so 20,000 should be deducted from 7,20,000 so here what they are saying so 7,20,000 is a profit but 20,000 rupees of expense was charged in next quarter, which you have to charge it in this quarter. So from profit, again, if 20,000 of expense is reduced because you're charging it to the same quarter, then in such case, 7 lakh rupees will be your 7 lakh rupees will be your quarterly income. So this expense alone, you had to deduct it. Okay. Next is illustration number four. So here they are saying, again, there is a company and it is giving its seasonal products. And the sales have been given. So Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, 15%, 15%, 50%, 25% is your sales. First quarter details have been given. So first quarter, the sales, salary, advertisement, admin and selling expenses. And the, they are saying that they want to defer 21 crores of expenditure having more sales. Because in the next quarter, there is more sales. They want to defer this 21 crores of expenditure. Same as illustration one. What? You should not defer it. Correct? So, you should not defer it. So, data directly take it. 50, 30, 2, 8. So, 50, 30, 2 and 8 has come as 10. So, your profit will be 10 crores again. This is the same as illustration 1. So, I am not explain it, explaining it again. Okay. Now. So, now let's start with that. Test your knowledge question. So, starting with the MCQ's part. In the first question, they say that AS25 mandates the following in relation to the interim financial reports. So, they are asking which of the following options did the AS25 say that it is mandatory to follow. So, the first one is that the it mandates which entity should publish their interim financial reports. Did we write anything in the concept? note that which which entity should mandatorily prepare this interim financial reports the answer is no so as 25 doesn't tell you then your question will be uh, that you know listed companies are mandatorily required to you know publish their interim financial reports where is this being said then if it is not being said under as 25 it is being said under the sebi norm so it is not man made mandatory under as 25 it is being made and mandatory under sebi norms that the listed company should publish their interim financial statements so in as 25 they don't tell you anywhere okay and how frequent it should be published that also they don't tell you one month or six months or nine months it is your choice next is how soon it should publish after the end of interim period so your end of interim period is suppose 39 23 okay so within how many days you should publish this interim financial report does anywhere we spoke the answer is no so this also does not mandate so none of the above is going to be your answer here okay so now starting with the second question so now second question so here they tell you that the standard defines interim financial report as a financial report for interim period that contains a set of what kind of financial statements. I told you in the concept video itself, it is either complete or condensed. Both can be your option there. Okay. So, uh, option number D will be your answer here. So, now let's moving on to question number 3. Here they tell you that ABC Limited had report 85,000 as pre-tax profit in the first quarter. So, in the first quarter, they have 85,000 rupees of 
profit and then they are expecting a loss of 25000 in the subsequent quarters that means in quarter 2 3 4 they are expecting a loss of 25000 each okay and they have given a tax rate slab of 20% on the first 20000 of earnings so they are saying on that annual income on the first 20000 uh, rupees of earnings we'll apply a tax rate of 20% and then 40% on additional earnings so whatever about 20000 is there on that we are going to apply 40% okay now we have to calculate nothing but our tax expense so first what you should do so the first step will be calculating your estimated annual income so for the first quarter alone they are saying find out what is the tax so your annual income is how much 85000 minus 25 minus 25 minus 25 so 85000 minus 75000 so 10000 is your annual income second step will be to calculate a estimated annual tax your annual tax is nothing but on 10000 how much tax so on the first 20000 your tax is 20% so our 10000 comes under this 20000 only so 10000 into 20% will be your tax rate so 2000 rupees is our tax so what will be your weighted average tax rate your weighted average tax rate will be 2000 your tax divided by annual income of 10000 20% will be your weighted average tax rate so that you have to apply on your quarter one's uh, profit so 85000 into 20% if you apply that weighted average tax rate your quarter one's tax expense will come as 17000 rupees okay i hope you understood this question this we have already re read in the concept notes itself okay so next next we are going to uh, see the Question number four, in which they tell you that entity prepares a quarterly interim financial reports, and they are saying that they are engaged in the sale of mobile phones. So they are doing a, uh, so they are doing a business of selling the mobile phones, and normally there is five percent of customer claim on their warranty. So what they do is whenever they issue this mobile phone, so in case if there is any repair work or if there is any you know. um negatives in this mobile they can come back to the shop and they can get it repaired so for that they are giving a warranty that you know whenever you get a new phone they'll tell you know within 6 months if there is any damage you can come and claim it in our shop and that we will do free of cost so free of cost we will repair it and give it to you if you come within 6 months so 6 months warranty they can give you so the same way they are saying that they have given warranty to their customers and 5% of their customers come back to claim that warranty so 5% will be their cost will be a cost to them okay so they are saying that the first quarter they had calculated 5% of sales which was 10 million so here they are saying that in first quarter the sale was 10 million rupees so on that 5% they were expecting what on that 5% they were expecting warranty claims so 5% means 0.5 million rupees of warranty claims they were expecting so for this they would have made a provision for this they would have made a provision correct yes because you know in the future they are expecting 5% uh, warranty claim so for that cost now it's a, they would make a provision correct so 5% 0.5 0.5 million of provision would have been created in the first quarter itself however what happened after that was in the second quarter when it started in the second quarter started a fault was found a big fault was found in the phone due to which what happened they expected that the warranty claims will increase and it will become 10% so earlier it was 5% now they are expecting they will have to a uh, do more free of cost repair and give more warranty service and it will increase to 10% so your basically your expenses increase here as a company if you see if you have to give more warranty repair service to your customers then in such case 10 then in such case increase in that percentage is a cost to you because you have to do more free of cost work for them okay so sales in the second quarter were 15 million so they are saying in the second quarter the sales was 15 million rupees so how much was the total sale in quarter 1 and quarter 2 it was 10 million plus 15 million 25 million was the total sales so on this total sales of 25 million we are expecting that 10% of warranty claim will be that so 2.5 million warranty claim is going to be there so this much amount of provision you will have to create okay but how much provision have you already created you have only created 0.5% of a 0.5 million uh, worth of provision so 2.5 million minus 0.5 million 2 million more worth of provision you have to create correct so here that is the answer option number b so the question would ask you what would be the provision that is charged in the second quarter so 2 million uh, worth of provision you have to charge in the second quarter so these were all your mcqs i hope you understood then here theoretical questions which will quickly go through so here they are saying that uh, you know uh they have an interim period which is ending on 31st december 2001 so for that what kind of uh, 
you know interim financial statements do they have to pre present you remember we read this box where i told you that uh, you have to prepare balance sheet pnl cash flow statements for balance sheet you have to prepare two statements for a uh, pnl four statements and again cash flow two statements so the same statements you have to prepare here for balance sheet alone i'll discuss the other two you can see okay so for balance sheet i told you that you have to prepare for end of current interim period and the same you have to prepare for end of the preceding financial year so end of current interim period is what 31st december x1 and the preceding year at the same time would be 31st preceding financial year end preceding financial year end i told you so preceding financial year end would be 31st march 2001 okay so for both of these years you have to give a uh, balance sheet that means this will be your current this will be your comparative balance sheet okay let me again discuss cash flow with you so for cash flow i told you that you have to make year to date so first is current interim period year to date and then comparative previous year year to date you have to give current period would be from 14 to 31 12 the same this is for x1 31 12 x1 the same you have to do for comparative would be 14 x0 to 31 12 x0 so the same thing only you have to do see here they have given x1 and x0 same way profit and loss statement also this is what you have to answer in the question if you had seen the concept video that would have been clear to you okay next is uh, they are asking that you know there is an agreement which has been entered between the stock exchange and the listed enterprise uh that they have to give a interim financial report so when they are preparing this interim financial report as per clause 41 of the sebi act or stock exchange do they have to follow the provisions of as 25 will as 25 be applied there for this we had already studied that when you are preparing the statement i made a column and made you understand no there was recognition criteria there was presentation criteria so here that's what they are saying that uh the recognition and uh, measurement principles are not given by sebi so that you have to follow what has been laid down in as 25 only but the presentation what is there whatever is given under the sebi norms that is under clause 41 under sebi that you can follow so presentation will be according to sebi the recognition and measurement is going to be according to as 25 okay next question is whether the impairment loss recognized on ppe in the first quarter be reversed in the second quarter so basically what you have to remember here is that um every uh, interim financial uh, statement every interim financial statement you have to assume that this interim financial statement is nothing but just like your annual financial statement in your annual financial statements if there is any um, you know indicators of reversal of impairment if there is any indicator of reversal of impairment that means any good indicator is there would you reverse your uh, would you reverse your impairment or not in your annual fs the answer is yes you would reverse it the same way even if it is interim fs you can reverse the impairment that you had already booked okay if there is a good indicator so that's what they have told here if the indicator exists as per as 28 that it can be reversed then in such case you can recover uh, then in such case you can reverse it according to whatever provisions have been given in as 28 you can reverse it in the interim financial statements also okay so that was your question all the three theoretical questions now let's move on to your practical questions so your first practical question is also like a theory question only where they are telling you that on what basis according to as 25 on what basis will you calculate for an interim period the provision for the defined benefit schemes like pension gratuity etc for the employees so how are you going to basically calculate it according to as 25 they are asking so here yes so here they are saying that you know uh, whatever the provisions are there no so that should be as per as 25 that should be calculated on year to date basis that means now when we even did the mcq number 4 no what we did we saw for quarter 1 and when we came to quarter 2 we saw for quarter 1 also quarter 2 also how much total provision should have been booked we did not only see for quarter 2 we saw quarter 1 and quarter 2 cumulatively so the same way whenever you are making an provision for employee benefit expenses also or defined benefit schemes also it should be calculated on a year to date basis that means from the start of the financial year till your interim period end till your interim period end how much provision should be there so that should be calculated and how will it be determined it should be determined using the uh, rates at the end of the prior financial year adjusted for market fluctuations and for significant curtailment settlement or so keeping everything in mind about the employee benefit expenses you have to keep all the factors in mind and on year to to year to date basis you have to calculate that provision okay now let's move on to question number 99 so here they are saying that on 30th june 2001 asmita limited incurred 2 lakh from net 
टू लाख रुपीज नेट लॉस फ्रॉम डिस्पोजल ऑफ अ बिजनेस सेगमेंट ओके अंसो ऑन थर्टी एथ जून वॉट हैपन दे इन कर्ड अ लॉस ऑफ टू लाख रुपीज ओके एंड ऑन थर्टी फर्स्ट जुलाई टू थाउजेंड वन दे कंपनी पेड सिक्सटी थाउजेंड फॉर प्रॉपर्टी टैक्सेस फॉर द इंटायर कैलेंडर ईयर टू थाउजेंड वन ऑन थर्टी फर्स्ट जुलाई दैट इज नेक्स्ट ईयर मंथ एंड दे पेड taxes okay and this 60000 worth of taxes was related to the entire year okay and they are saying that our interim period is 6 months interim period ending on 30th september so our interim period is from april to september so now what will be the net income we have to find out here okay so whatever loss whatever loss of the income interim period is there it should be booked in the same interim period only so 2 lakh rupees of exception 2 lakh rupees of loss on disposal that we have had we have to during uh, we have to book it during that same interim period only so on the 30th september ending interim period itself this 2 lakh rupees of loss we are going to book and the 60000 property tax which is there it is related to the entire year i told you that whenever we are studying no um that you should not uh, defer any expenses and whatever expenses related to that particular interim period that should be booked in the same interim period only for that i told you that there is an exception the exception was what the exception was taxation taxation alone is uh, if it is related to the entire year it should be split to the entire year it should be split to the entire year so since 60000 you paid for the entire calendar year up to only 6 months expense only up to 6 months expense you have to book in this interim period because this interim period is only from april to september so only tax related to april to september you should book into that interim period so only 30000 worth of tax you are going to book into this interim period what about the remaining 30000 what about the remaining 30000 from the remaining 30000 15000 will be related to jan to march so jan to march has already been completed but this you still did not book so what you have to say so what happened there is an entire year so you have jan to march then you have april to september and then you have the other months october to december so this is your interim period in this interim period only you paid the tax you paid tax related to the whole year okay so here in this april to september you will book it as an expense whatever is related to the 6 months you will book the 6 months as an expense what about the jan to march what about the tax which is related to jan to march you will uh, show it as a payment of outstanding amount that the tax was outstanding for jan to march and this interim period you had paid it so you made a payment of an outstanding amount and what about october to december it has not still come we are still standing at september only so whatever expenses is related to october to december it is a future expense so for that now itself you have paid so prepaid expenses you will show as remaining okay so what you are going to do so 30000 you will show as expense 15000 you will show as that you have paid for outstanding expense and another 50000 you will show as prepaid expense okay i hope you understood this question number 9 also now moving on to question number 10 which tells you that there is an annual income of 10 lakh rupees the tax rate on the first 5 lakh is 30% and on the balance income is 40% so there is a slab rate and then they have given you quarterly income of 75000 2 lakh 50000 3 lakh 75000 and 3 lakh rupees okay so now here let's do what is our uh, first what write all the quarterly income quarter 1 quarter 2 quarter 3 quarter 4 income by 75000 2 lakh 50000 3 lakh 75000 and 3 lakh rupees so our total annual income was how much our total annual income was 10 lakh rupees so our in annual income is 10 lakh rupees now you have to find out what will be our annual tax expense so on this 10 lakh rupees you have to split it into slab so on the first 5 lakh they said there will be 30% so 10 lakh so this will be 5 lakh into 30% One lakh fifty thousand will be a tax expense. Plus, on the remaining five lakh, how much will be the expense? It will be forty percent. So five lakh into forty percent, two lakh rupees. So three lakh fifty thousand will be your annual tax amount. Annual tax amount. So what will be your weighted average annual tax rate? Your weighted average annual tax rate would be annual income of three lakh fifty thousand. Sorry, your annual tax of three lakh fifty thousand divided by your annual income of ten lakh rupees. So thirty five percent is your weighted average tax rate. So now each quarter on each quarter's income, you have to charge this thirty five percent. So seventy five thousand into thirty five percent, two lakh fifty thousand into thirty five percent, three lakh seventy five thousand into thirty five percent, and three lakh into thirty five percent. If you do so, so if you do so, you will be able to find out your full year's tax expense. You will be able to find out what will be your full year's tax expense as well as your what will be your quarterly tax expense. Okay. Now let's move on to question number eleven. which is your final question of this as and here they tell you that there uh, there is a company whose profit before tax is 4 lakh rupees and this profit before tax of 4 lakh rupees is related to the third quarter which is ending on september month okay and they have given that the following 
um, you know, uh, treatment is required under AS25. So now we have to tell what we have to do about this. So starting with the first point where they say that there is a dividend income of 4 lakh rupees which they have received during that quarter. In the third quarter, they received an income of 4 lakh rupees. So whatever, one point you have to remember is whatever income or expense you incurred during a particular quarter, it should be booked in that quarter itself. It should be booked in that quarter itself. Okay. Okay. So now starting with the first one where I told you dividend income of 4 lakh rupees was earned during a quarter. That means entire 4 lakh should have been booked in that quarter itself. But what they did was they only booked 1 lakh rupees. What about the remaining 3 lakh rupees then? So it might have been such that this 3 lakh rupees may they might have deferred which is a wrong treatment. So 3 lakh rupees also you have to book in that quarter itself. So 4 lakh rupees is already a profit. 3 lakh rupees you will have to add to it because 3 more lakh rupees of income you have to book in that quarter itself. Okay. Next one they are saying that there is sales promotion expense. So they have incurred an expense of 15 lakh rupees. And 80% of that expense was incurred in third quarter. So if only 80% of the expense was incurred in third quarter, then 80% of the expense should have been booked in the third quarter. But what they did, they deferred it to the fourth quarter. So how much is uh, the 80% uh, of 15 lakh? It is 12 lakh rupees. So 12 lakh they should have booked in third quarter. But what they did, they deferred it to the fourth quarter, which is a wrong treatment. So if you are going to book an expense of 12 lakh in this quarter itself, it will be minus 12 lakh rupees. Okay. Next is, in the third quarter, what they did, uh, they charged the they changed the depreciation method due to which there was an excess depreciation of 12 lakh rupees. Okay, and this change they did in which quarter? Third quarter. So, the entire excess de uh, depreciation related to that change should be booked in that quarter only. And what they did, they debited the entire amount of 12 lakhs in the third quarter itself. But they are saying that the share of the third quarter is only 3 lakh rupees. That does not matter. How much is your share? How much is not your share? You did the change in third quarter, then book the entire expense in the third quarter itself. So here the treatment is correct. So no changes have to be made. Okay. Next, they are telling you that 2 lakh rupees of extraordinary gain was there. Okay, which was received in the third quarter, but they allocated it to the third and fourth quarter both. This is wrong. You should allocate the entire 2 lakh rupees to that quarter itself. So, 1 lakh rupees they put in third quarter, 1 lakh rupees they put in fourth quarter. So, this is wrong. Now, we have to add 1 lakh rupees to the third quarter again. Okay. Next is cumulative loss, which is relating in change of method of inventory valuation, was recognized in the third quarter of 3 lakh rupees. So, there was a loss. And the loss was due to change in some method of inventory. Okay, and in the third quarter, they had put a loss of 3 lakh rupees. They are saying, but out of this loss of 1 lakh relates to previous quarter. That means what they did, previous quarter's loss, they had deferred it to third quarter and booked to third quarter. This is wrong. If it is related to previous quarters, if it was incurred in the previous quarter, in the previous quarter only you have to book. You should not defer and bring it to the third quarter. So here this 1 lakh rupees of loss should not be brought here. So now it has to be reversed. So we are reversing the 1 lakh rupees of loss. Okay. So if you are reversing that 1 lakh rupees of loss, you have to add it back to the profit. So plus 1 lakh rupees. Okay. Next is finally they are saying sale of investment in the first quarter. They had a gain of 20 lakh rupees. So in the first quarter, we are currently seeing the third quarter. So they are saying in the first quarter, there was a gain of 20 lakh rupees. But what they did was this gain of 20 lakh rupees which was to be booked in the first quarter itself. They equally split it to all the four quarters. Now that means every quarter they booked 5 lakh rupees. So 20 lakh divided by four quarters. That means every quarter they booked 5 lakh rupees. So that means in third quarter also they booked 5 lakh rupees. But it should not have been booked in third quarter. It should have been booked in the first quarter. So this you have to reverse. So this is basically a gain. So if you reverse you have to do minus 5 lakh rupees. So if you do, so if you do 4 plus 3 minus 12 plus plus 1 minus 5. So 8 lakh rupees of loss is our net. Let's see what's coming here. Yeah, 8 lakh rupees is the loss for the third quarter, which is the correct treatment. Okay. So yes, guys. So now we have discussed all the questions related to AS25. And I hope there are no doubt. In case if there are any, please leave it in the comment section below. I try to clear that. And if you found that help video helpful, Please make sure to like, share and also subscribe to the channel and leave your feedback down below. Thank you so much.